Well, I uh, got a guitar when I was 13, and I, I don't know, I got caught up in Hank Williams. Uh, I heard him on the radio. There was a superintendent in my neighborhood, you know, like a, a super of the tenement buildings. He played blues, like... Uh, Gone down the road, I'm stopping Fanny Mason. Tell my man, watch out, don't stop me talking to you. And he taught me a lot, right on the stoops of Bronx, New York City, you know. The, the teachers in junior high school thought I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I couldn't wait to get out to go sit with Willie. Willie Green, he would play blues on a stoop, and I would like, play me more, you know, I just liked it, it just, I got caught up in it, you know. And uh, there was a, a songwriter, an aspiring songwriter in my neighborhood, took me down to a, a record company when I was about 17 years old, and uh, I played a few songs for them. Uh, I, I was like, maybe I was about 16. Each night I asked the stars up above And they said, sign them up. What's your name? <laughs> so they signed me up, and I started making hit records. Huh. And, was, that, uh, was that the first one? Well, yeah, that was the first real big one. You know, it went top five nationally. You know, I had a lot of other uh, records. And then it, it just went from there. You know, I, I had songs like... Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good. But uh, things took off, and you know, I, and and I, I was having a lot of trouble at home because my parents, I mean, they they both had fathers that drank. My mom is wonderful, though. She was she was like a responsibility, <laughs> crazy person. I mean, if there was a need, she'd fill it. You know, she is 84 years old today, and uh, she still takes care of a whole, the whole building. Wow, that's you know, great. she's just just a precious woman and uh, but there was so much arguing they didn't know how to talk to each other they didn't drink or drug or anything but I got into drugs at a, a real early age about 15 and uh, you know I, I went I went from there and it was like uh, I thought I found uh, something to give me some peace and, and make me feel like a grown-up and give me some uh, security because uh, things were pretty rocky in my neighborhood. There was a lot of gangs and the, the kind of the lure of the streets. I got caught up in the, the gangs and being cool and being macho and running with the guys. And mm -hmm. uh, we didn't need anybody. We'll run our own lives. Thank you. Uh, like that. The, uh, the career just kept, it, it just kept soaring. Mm -hmm. I, I could do nothing wrong with records. I, God really gifted me with, uh, I, would, I would write about, characters in my neighborhood and uh, that were bigger than life like uh, there was a I wrote a song called Donna the Prima Donna King of the New York Streets but this one was a big hit it's called Run Around Sue it goes uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that oh, that's was a, it's interesting to hear that, isn't it? It's interesting to hear the, the for some of the younger, that, that's on the oldies, but that, that was the music when I was just a kid. <laughs> Who was that about? Well, that song was about a guy, uh, <laughs> not a guy, that was about a, uh, a girl named uh, Roberta. I couldn't rhyme it with anything. <laughs> you know, it was like, keep away from, run around, Roberta. I think it, was just, it was like, how do you do that? So I had to call it Sue, you know. Uh, the Wanderer has an interesting story. Uh, there was a guy named Jackie Burns in my neighborhood who was a sailor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had Flo tattooed on his left arm and Mary on his right. Janie had tattooed here. 
and he had Rosie on it. Every time he'd date another girl, he'd get a name tattooed. He had girls' names all over. You know, it was like, Flo on my left arm, Mary on my right. Jenny is the girl, I'll be with the night. Little girl, ask me which one I love the best. I tear open my shirt and I show Rosie on my chest. I'm a wanderer, yeah, I'm a wanderer. Really a sad song in some ways. <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds like in the 50s we used to record things that always sounded like fun. Mm -hmm. But it is a sad song because it says, uh, I roam from town to town. I go through life without a care. I'm as happy as a clown with my two fists of iron, but I'm going nowhere. And it described a lot of the guys in my neighborhood, including myself. Mm -hmm. You know, but as a kid, you don't know what you're singing about sometimes. But it, in retro, in, you know, now that I look back on it, I see that if you could grab onto that couplet, two fists of iron, but I'm going nowhere, hmm. you, could, you could see where violence goes. I was on tour with uh, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper in 1959. We were co-headlining a tour in the Midwest. And I was 19 years old, and I didn't know that I, was, I had questions on my mind like, who am I, where am I, where am I going, what's life about, what, why am I here? And I was on tour with these guys, and we were rocking. We were having a great time out there in the Midwest. Uh, we were on the school bus. We didn't have luxury, uh, you know, coaches, uh, custom-made buses like they do today. But it was very cold, and uh, after two weeks on the tour, Buddy Holly started recruiting people to get on this plane. And uh, I, I refused to go on the plane because it was it, my... I think it was, came to about $36, and my parents were paying like $36 in Bronx, New York City. They were paying that much rent every month, and they were always, my mom was always complaining about my father not having a job and not able to meet the rent, and yada, yada, and I thought, I am not gonna toss away $36 just for a 45 minute flight. So I didn't get on it. The next morning, I mean, that night, Buddy Holly, Richie Valance, and the Big Bopper got on that plane. The next morning, when we pulled into Moorhead, Minnesota, uh, we walked into the hotel, and there was a, a TV up on the wall, and they were saying that the plane went down, killing all aboard, including the pilot. And I was devastated. I, I was just two weeks sleeping, eating on the bus. We were, like, singing together for two... I, I was 19 years old. I was having a great time. It was like mm -hmm. a field trip for me. And these guys I really bonded with. Richie was 16 years old. He was from the Barrio in the San Fernando Valley in California. And Buddy was from Lubbock, Texas. I never met anybody like this. I was from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So I'd be sitting with Buddy Holly. I'd be telling him about all the characters that I was writing about, like Frankie Yunk Yunk and Joe Beebe Eyes and Ralphie Moach, all these guys in the Bronx. And he'd be, he'd be telling me about Billy Joe Bob and, you know, and it was, it was a great, and now they were gone yeah. in an instant. And I was 19 years old and I was like baffled, like, uh, what's going on? I, I thought, I, because I, I was looking for something that would give me some peace and, and uh, security and uh, uh, I, I, don't know. I was just looking for mm -hmm. what life was about, some truth, you know? And, and, and now I had more questions than I started with. I got on my knees. April 1st, 1968, that was 31 years ago. I haven't had a drug or a drink since. Praise God. I mean, I just... He That's just, beautiful. He lifted it right, that confusion that obsession, that just running, running. It didn't matter what kind of shoes I had on, but I was running, whether it was I was taking pills or mm -hmm. drinking or doing this or smoking it or whatever. And I was so lost, and he just... So that was a major took change. A major change. I became aware of God's power before I really became aware of his reality, but mm -hmm. soon after that I... Caught your show, huh? actually. <laughs> <laughs> one that day, is important. <laughs> one, day I, one day I was like surfing the channels and up comes uh, EWTN.